Praise the Lord. Good night, everybody, and welcome to our virtual Bible studies with Holy Ghost Palm Ministry, my Cook's Assembly, under the leadership of Apostle Keith Pitt and First Lady Loretta Reed Pitt. Welcome to our virtual Bible studies. Tonight we'll be looking at the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 4. Praise the Lord. We welcome you all tonight. Before we begin, I'll just go ahead and open in prayer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we bless you tonight, Lord God Almighty. We give you praise and thanks for who you are, for bringing us through through another day. Even as we're about to do our Bible studies, we ask God that you take full control. Father, the word is, it, it needs you, God, to bring it to life, to bring clarity, to bring power, God Almighty. So, Father, even tonight, I lean on your power and lean on your spirit to lead and to direct, to take control tonight. God, let me decrease and you increase. Father, I pray, God, that your people will be edified tonight. I pray, God, that somebody will have a clear understanding of your word. Father, we ask you, Lord Jesus, to just glorify yourself in our Bible studies tonight, for this is such a privilege, O oh God, to be, be a teacher of your word. So, Father, we ask that you will glorify yourself and you will just have your own way as we look to you tonight and tell you thanks in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Good night. Our lesson for tonight is taken from Second Timothy four praise the lord i'll go ahead and read our first two verses which says i charge thee therefore before god and the lord jesus christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom preach the word be instant in season out of season reprove rebuke exhort with all long suffering and doctrine praise the lord we're looking at second timothy 4 tonight praise the lord we already know that the writer of this book is paul writing to timothy so after he had he's just exhorting him and giving him a lot of instructions throughout this book when he reads the chapter 4 he says I charge you therefore before Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead that is to say that Christ is not only gonna dead um, judge those that are gone before us but those that are alive and remaining for the Bible says that we will not all taste death at his appearing but those that are alive and well he will judge both them and those that are gone before us he said to timothy preach the word be instant in season and out of season reprove rebuke exhort with all long suffering and doctrine now we understand that this was written to timothy but all scripture is given by inspiration by the spirit of god and they're always alive and well so even today, our leaders, the people that God has called to shepherd us, this word stands for them today. They are required to preach the word. They are required to rebuke, to reprove with all patience and truth. The, a lot of persons know, and it's sad to say that if their, preach, if their pastor or leader reprove or, or rebuke them they will want to leave the church and they'll think that the the pastor is speaking on them when in fact it is not so for the bible says who the lord loveth he chased it and even so with a leader that is set above us whom he loveth he chased it would you want to be going down on the wrong path and somebody 
who loves you see you on that wrong path and just allow you to go no nobody would want that so that that is why god set people over us who can help us to guide us on this way as children of god we have to understand this we we must understand that this is not good to just run from one church to a next church but if God sets somebody over us, if God sets us at a particular church, they are charged. It's a command from God that they preach the word, they reprove, they rebuke, they lead us. Now, it's also said that he is required to do so with all long suffering and doctrine. Now, this means that with all patience, with, 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 with meekness, because a lot of leaders, they, some leaders, they are correcting, but sometimes they might use words that might come off strong, but at the same time, they mean well. So we are the ones also to understand that, listen, they, they, they mean us well. They're trying to get us in line. And as preachers, they have to watch their word also and be patient because some persons you know because they've been in the world for so long when they come into this faith they 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 it is not that they don't have a desire to get it but they might take a longer time to get it we're in a time where persons have become lovers of themselves and they want to hear what they want to hear but if you are a child of god that loves god and has the desire to please God wherever God sets you you should stay there until unless God tells you to move if God sets you some somewhere please expect that there will be times when even the word will sting the words that are coming from behind the pulpit from the preachers sometimes they will sting it's not that persons are picking on you. It's not that people know your story. But it's given by the Holy Spirit when they seek the Lord and they get a word. It's to help perfect us as saints. It is all a part of the process of salvation that we, we are trained and we are guided by the preaching and by the shepherds that are set above us. So Paul said to him, you know, be instant. It's not just on occasion. As leaders, it's not just when they're behind the pulpit. But when they call you in the office and they talk to you, they are doing their duty as a shepherd and as a bishop. They're doing what they're called to do, what they're charged to do as a shepherd over us. And we are to understand that they have to do this in season and out of season so that they two can finish their assignment now verse 3 says for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but after their own loss shall they eat to themselves teachers having itching ears now if there is ever a time or a season that persons are so easily tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine and it goes back to those persons who didn't want to be rebuked or are reproved in church they sometimes leave and they go and start a next church and not that they don't have the calling because the gift is without repentance they have the call to preach but there is a process and there is a time before god gives the charge or the release for them to go a lot of persons don't wait on that time to come. And because they were repu repu um, rebuked in church, they leave and they start a church on their own. And now people begin to draw to these people not knowing that, listen, they did not do this the right way. For there is a right way to do this gospel. Even Paul, when he was converted, he, had, he was away for three years before he officially started his ministry. There's a training process. There, there's a, a, a process to go through before you can lead the people of God. Now, we're in a time where people have become desirous to hear what they want to hear. A lot of people want to hear, you know, sow a seed and you will receive a blessing. 
But when a preacher says, listen, you are required to stay consecrated. You're required to pray. You're required to fast. Nobody wants it. A lot, not nobody. A lot of persons don't want to hear that. Some people don't want to hear a preacher say, you know, that this is a sin or that is a sin or God doesn't like this. And so because the pre whenever people who don't like to hear these things, hear this coming from the pulpit, they'll easily move from a church and go to a next church and they blame it and say, oh, there's no love in the church and nobody loves them and church people are hypocrites when it's not so. People who generally seek the Lord and preach on holiness are people that are standing and living by the principles of the word of God. And as children of God, we ought to check ourselves on a daily to see if we're truly in the faith and to see if we're easily offended by the things that should shape us and mold us into the child of God that we should be. He said, he's heaping to themselves teachers. A lot of people just running and following persons because, you know, the crowd is doing this and I like what they're saying and this is it. And But what are we truly in this gospel for? Why, are we, why have we accepted Christ? Is it to hear what we want to hear? Or is it to hear the things that will mold us and bring us to perfection and bring us to the standards of God? Is it to get us right with God that we may love his appearing when he's coming? We, we have to check ourselves. See if you, you, you are one of those who, if you hear something behind the pulpit, you believe that somebody is rebuking you or somebody is talking your business. We have to check ourselves to see if we are lining up with accordance to the word or if we're just going after what we want to hear or what we desire to hear. For this is a time when there's so many things that cause us to have vain imagination, some vain things. We're imagining some vain things, things that are not so. But because of so many distractions in the world today, we're easily led astray. We have to check ourselves daily check ourselves, check ourselves, and understand why we are in this faith. Verse 4 says, And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. Fables are false teachers. False teachers come in many forms. As I said, one, is, one such false teacher is somebody that didn't get the proper training but because they believe that the pastor or the bishop is speaking on them, they leave and start a church. Others are just persons who have their own perception of what the Bible says and not given as inspiration by the Holy Spirit. People who have their own opinion of what the Word of God is saying. Listen, people of God, we cannot understand the mysteries of this Bible without the Holy Spirit. And if a man or a woman comes to you that doesn't have the Holy Spirit, how can they explain it to you? And some people have the wrong spirit. We believe what the Bible says, by your fruit, you shall know them. By your fruit, you shall know them. Try the spirit to see if it be of God. We have to be sober and vigilant in this time so we don't heap unto ourselves false teachers are, are turned away from the truth. Verse 5 says, But watch thou in all things, endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. This, as I said before, was written to Timothy, but even so it's needed more than ever. We ought to be sober and vigilant as children of God in these times. And the leaders too. We, we have to be watchful. He said to, said to Timothy, endure affliction. Affliction come in many forms. You know, affliction is also when the church members talking against the leaders, not knowing that, you know, they're wrong. It's, they're imagining vain stuff. And 
other but then it was more of physical persecution but i'm talking about no we have to be careful that we are not one of them that are that is causing affliction to this gospel we have to ensure that we are one of them that are in the faith that are holding up the blood stain banner we have to be watchful for, for the overcoming no man knows when god will appear and we don't want to be like the five foolish virgin we have to understand that we we are were required to start out our own salvation with fear and trembling he says do the work of an evangelist now not everybody is called to preach not everybody is called to preach but everybody is called to witness everybody is called to share this good news everybody is called to share why they are persuaded of this gospel why they believe in christ their encounter their experience their testimonies everybody is called to do so we 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 can't be lost expecting that is when i get the mic i'm gonna live out my gift no the purpose of us as children of god is not to be selfish with this salvation but to share it with others anybody that the lord would have us to come in contact with we don't know if it's their last minute or their last hour that we are seeing them so if you have the opportunity to share this gospel even to say that you know that god loves you he loves you, you know. He loves you because I, 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 I was in sin and I, I've experienced his love and I come to know that, listen, the sacrifice he made on Calvary, it wasn't for me alone. Even it's to share that we have to do this work. We have to put in the work as children of God. Persons are dying on a daily. People around us are are. are thus falling away people are are, are are just um messed up because of society and all the beliefs that are are coming and and happening in this time one such thing is that there's many ways to heaven when the bible clearly says that jesus is the way the truth and the life nobody can come to the father but through jesus yet they're they're preaching and they're teaching that many people are following out there that are saying these things and the ones that are doing talking about the truth and preaching the truth they might not get the views but you might have been one such people to come in contact with somebody whose mind has been messed up by society we need to understand that this is not by our own strength if it's us alone we have no power we have no might to do this it's by the spirit of the living god the holy spirit can teach us and put things in our mouths when we have the desire for souls when we come around um people even if it's to whisper pray in your heart and say god what can i say to this brother or this sister I might be meeting them for the first time, but what can I say to them that could impact or leave a seed in them that they may turn to you somewhere down along the line? You know, um, I remember when I used to travel on bus to go to work before I was married. And when I'm coming home, because I come home late in the nights and I'm coming on the bus and I feel so burdened because I'm saying each time somebody comes off the bus is like I'm allowing that person to, to step off in hell when I could have done something. It's not so, but that's how I feel. And I would say, Lord, help me because I'm somebody that is shy. Help me to say something. And I'll just stand up and I say, you know, just hear me out for a minute. Or if I'm in a taxi going to work, I say, hear me out for a minute. God loves you. He came not for the righteous, but for the sinners. I, I'm not coming to, to push anything on you or force my gospel on you. 
But I just want to share that God loves you and he's waiting for you. Whatever you can say, it don't even have to be a long sermon. The Holy Spirit, but then the disciples relied totally on the Spirit of God. When they were to go up before the council, he said, uh, um, don't, don't think about what you're going to say. Once you open your mouth, I will fill it. We are so, we, we, we've reached to a point where we feel like we're so reliant on ourselves. And if I don't feel like I can do it, or if I don't, the, I don't have the words, or if I didn't prepare. This is not about I. This is about trusting God to do the work that only he can do. This is about his work. He will give us the authority and the power and the unction if we truly desire for souls to be saved. He will give us that unction to talk and to say the things that can impact somebody's life. Do the work. We're all called to do the work. It's not to watch anybody and think about who doing it best or not like that. It's about what we do in our secret time. In our secret times and in the times that only God's eyes are watching us. He was, Tim, um, Paul wasn't telling Timothy about the church only. He's telling him overall, just do this work. This is what we're called to do. Do the work. Make full proof of your ministry. What is this ministry? This ministry is about Christ being lifted up and called, join all men unto him. Christ being lifted up. It's not just about coming to church and say yes. I come to church and I, 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 I go to prayer meeting and I do all this. And we, we say this all the time. But how do you make full proof of that ministry? It's, it's in every moment that God bless us with. Every second that God bless us with. What can I do for you in this moment, God? What will you have me to do in this time? What would you have me? I, I'm at work. I'm doing my work. I'm efficient. But is there somebody that I can bless at this time? Is there somebody that I can tell about this gospel? Tell about this love? Making full proof of your ministry. Making full proof of your ministry. Is there ever a time that we need to do this is no. But I encourage us to, to, to just decrease a little bit. Just decrease a little bit that the Holy Spirit, that God can increase and unctionize us to do his work. Just decrease a little bit. It's only by the Spirit of God we can make full proof of this ministry. The, the apostles were totally reliant on the Spirit of God completely. They were reliant and every any time they felt like they needed more, they, they knew where to get that strength. They go back to God in prayer. God give me boldness. God help me. You know that Christ said that we should have the mind that he had. The same mind that was in Christ. He is best line is I must be about my father's business. And if we're called to be like Christ, daily that should be our cry. I must be about my father's business. Even if I'm on the job, Lord, what can I do today? It's not that God's going to tell you to disrupt the work. Because God is a God of order. He's not going to tell you to don't do your work or, or don't do your schoolwork. No. It's in that moment God will present the opportunity for his name to be glorified. He will present the opportunity for you to do his will. So everything is totally, totally reliant on God. All he needs is a vessel that is willing. You're on the job, say, God, even before you go to work, you do your devotion. What can I do for you today, Lord? Who can you use me to bless today, God? We have to have this mind on a daily. Because when God put in his appearance, we don't want to be one of those who, who leave behind an unfinished task. 
We don't want to be, be one of those people who, who act naive as to what was the assignment. The assignment is clear. God came for souls. He wants men. It's not his desire for any to perish, but all to come to repentance. He went on in verse 6 and says, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought, fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. I don't know about you, you know, brothers and sisters, but I too want to say these things. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. What are we truly working for? What are we working for as children of God? What are we working for? We are in a battle. And the Bible says that no man that worried entangled himself with the affairs of this life. What a hard thing to swallow. We're so entangled up with the pride of life and the lust of flesh and all the things that concern this place that is temporal. We have to set ourselves on, on the things that are eternal. Lay up treasures in heaven where rot and, and must can't grow. What are we working for on this Christian journey? Do you want to finish your course? Do you want to fight the good fight? Think about it. You can't fight the good fight. It, it's not about fighting the good fight only when you have the mic. It's not about fighting the good fight. And, and, and we, if we just realize, if we just realize that even our very own affliction is, is nothing compared to what God has prepared for us. We will we'll just take it as the apostles then take it. You know, glory in my affliction. That the, the, the power of God may rest upon us. But as soon as there is something, we get so discouraged and we get... We have to fight the good fight of faith. The good fight of faith is having faith even when there is no, 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 no possibility of things turning around. Fighting the good fight of faith is, listen, even if you are the only one on the job that is, you know, even sending a, a, a Bible verse to everybody every day. Contending for this faith contending fighting for this faith so many people they, they they believe in so many things that are 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 ungodly and when you hear them stand up and profess these things that you, it, it's not even logical when you think about it but when you hear them if you you're not strong in your mind you too would get persuaded of these things and yet there are so many persons who have so many things to offer when they, when they allow the Spirit of God to move through them and we, we, we use shyness and we use fear and we use this and that as an excuse to hide instead of contending for this faith. We, it's not just about singing and, and saying, I, 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 I want to say like Paul, I, I, I finished my course, I, I, I fought a good fight. You have to do the work. We have to do the work. We have to do the work. God said he will reward every man according to their work. According to your work. What work have you put in? What work have you put in so far since you've been on this journey? What work have you put in since you've been a Christian? What work have you put in since God has invested his Holy Spirit in you? We have to ask ourselves this. You see, God loves obedience. And we're called to be obedient to the principle and to the statutes of God. And I've come to accept that every day there's something that, to, that I should be obedient to. There's something that 
I believe that God will have me to do. And we just need to ask the Lord what that thing is. God, what you would have me to do today. What, what you would have me to say to somebody or do in any little way today. Not thinking about God, you know, just cover me and protect me from evil. And no, but God, what can I do today? You know, Paul did well. We, without a shadow of a doubt, we know that Paul did well. He, he, he set up churches. He is always writing letters to, you know, exhort them and to correct them and to teach them and to guide them. And not everybody has the same calling, but whatever God has blessed you with, suppose you're a good talker or you're, you're an encourager or whatever that gift is, because we all have something to offer. We all have something to offer. What, what you're good with, use it to glorify God. Use it to bring people to the kingdom of God. Ask God, here's my gift, Lord. I surrender whatever I'm good at to you, for you to use it. Paul did well. He said that he forget the things of the past, pressing towards that mark of the high calling we have to press towards that high calling so we too can say i have finished my course verse 8 he said henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day and not to me only but unto all them also that love is appearing paul was so confident he was so confident that his motives, that his actions, that his work line up with the will of God and line up with what God wanted him to do. He did all he did for Christ and he knew that in his heart and he was confident. Listen, I, I did all that I can. Anything that I, I don't get to do is because I, I, I didn't have the ability to do it. I went to the, 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 the wit's end. For God. What extent would we go for the saving of our soul today? What extent, ask yourself, what extent would I go for the saving of our soul? What extent would we really go as children of God? If we want to say, I have finished my course. I have fought a good fight. I, I believe we have it even much easier because there's nobody stoning us or persecuting us to call the name of Jesus. There's nobody hanging us on a tree or anything. And yet still, we'll do so minimal to get souls to be saved. We, we go to other extents to please ourselves and to go down in sackcloth and ashes to ask even for blessing from God. But what extent would we go to save a soul? How much sackcloth and ashes would we go in for, for somebody to be saved? Not just family member, but for, for us, for souls on a whole. What extent are we going as children of God for souls to be saved? Paul said with confidence, I henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. A crown of righteousness. God not going to just take up his crown of righteousness and give it to anybody. Not because we said that we're Christians. Remember he said that, you know, some came to him and said, didn't I prophesy in your name? Did because the motive was not right. They, they, they. It's like the seven sons of Sceva. They were doing just wanted the power of God and not just the will. Their heart wasn't at the right place. And we have to check ourselves to see if our heart is at the right place. We have to check ourselves. Is my heart at the right? Do I really love souls as much as I say? Do I really love God as much as I say? You understand? 
God, Paul said, there's a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give him. He knows that God is going to give him that crown, the God that is holy. And he, when he examines his works as a man, imagine he's a man, you know, and he could have examined his work and say, yeah, man, I did well. I, I did well. I'm, I'm sure I did well. You, you have this confidence that you do the exam and you know all of the answers. I know, I put, I know this is what I studied. I know I, I, I put in the work and I get all of these. So I know I'm going to get a hundred on this test. God is righteous. And, and if he could examine himself to such a point and say, you know, I, I, I know the righteous judge is going to give me a crown of righteousness. Because I did well. We too can do it. Because Paul is a man of like passion like us. Paul wasn't different from any of us. He was man, flesh and blood. He got saved just like us. We have encountered God just like Paul did. It doesn't matter how, but it's an encounter. We encounter it so we too can go all out for God if we just decrease and allow his Holy Spirit in us to increase and just listen to God for you I live for you I die whatever you want me to do God I am yours we can get there I believe so and he said Paul said with much boldness and not only me but to all those also who will love his appearing. You see, when you know, say, you've been a good, it's like a, a mother leave her children at home and she leave instructions and say, clean the house, make sure you wash the plate, make sure your, your uniform press and everything. And, you know, you get a call, say, mommy, they're on her way and you know, say, everything set. You're going to be excited. Because mommy probably say, you know, I'm, I'm going to bring back an ice cream for you if you do everything and everything set. Imagine the joy that child feels when you hear the call say, you know, mommy is on the way. Because they know that, listen, I did everything that mommy said me to do. Me clean the house, me, me wash plate, me do everything. What about us? If God was to put in his appearance at this very hour, could we say... Oh God, could we say that I'm ready? I'm I'm ready, God. I, I believe I've I've done my best on this journey. I believe I I, I do I fought a good fight. I believe I contend for the faith. I believe I share this gospel to all who I can. I believe that you know my life was a living example of the word. I be, I believe I, I listen uh, and uh, to those and I obey those that are set above me. I I do all that your word said, God. I'm ready. Are we ready tonight? Not just to say you know I did a sin today. But what about the things that we should do? Winning souls. Can we truly say that I've done all that I should do as a child of God? Can we say that? Anytime we get to that point where we have that confidence to say, you know, I, I think I'm doing my best on this journey. You know, nothing would bother us. Not even death. Oh, that wears thy sting. Nothing will bother us when we know that we have put in the work. We have done this work. Even so, Lord, come, Nonia, Crescent, to Galia, Titan. Praise the Lord. Not sure what happened a while ago. Praise the Lord. So imagine Paul had somebody with him. Everybody hearing me? Praise the Lord. Um, imagine you're, you're traveling with a person like Paul on this journey. And you see all the things that God is doing through him. And the boldness he has even in affliction. Even when they must drag him across the town. When they must beat him. He has this confidence. And you as a person just leave, leave, leave him like that. 
Paul is saying this person did that. And even so, we have some persons today because they, 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 they don't desire God as much. So as soon as a little thing come, they're, they're wavering. And a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. It's either you love God or you don't. You can't serve God and mama. We have to choose. And so a lot of Christians, a lot of people have one foot out and one foot in. This person, he departed completely from Paul because of the love he had for this present world. We have to check where our love is. Is it for God? Is it for the things of God? Or is it for this world or, and the things that I can attain in this world? Check where your love lies tonight. Check yourself to see if, you know, the, you, you're, you're more desirous and more focused on getting, you know, being comfortable in this life. You have to have this, you have to have a husband, you have to have a car, you have to have... Is it all about that? Is it all about seeking what's in the hand of God and not his face? It's all, is it all about the blessing and what I can get? And if I can't get, no, I'm not staying. And some, they, they, they'll endure, but we, we have to just check ourselves. And not only ourselves. If you see our brother or our sister, we look like them, them double-minded or they're, they're, they're not sure where they want to be. We can be that light to that person to show them that, listen, it doesn't, it doesn't profit you to gain the world and lose your soul. It doesn't profit any man at all to gain the world and lose his soul. If we are not guilty, we have to be that light, that beacon of light for somebody else. Praise the Lord. The rest of this verse, um, this chapter, is just Paul talking about a few persons who assisted um, and in the ministry and some persons that he sent out to different churches and all of that. And the rest of this verse, and you know, he's asking Timothy to come on to him as soon as he can. You know, but I'm going to wrap up here. And uh, as I said before, I, I just want us to examine ourselves. If we want to, with confidence and with boldness, say that I've finished my course, we have to examine what we do on a daily. Not just what we do on a Sunday or what we do on a Tuesday night or what we do on a Wednesday. We have to examine ourselves on a daily, contend for this faith on a daily, redeem the time on a daily for the days are evil. It, it, it takes, it needs no glasses to see that we're in perilous times. And if you're, you're not doing what you're supposed to do, we're not going to want to look up for the redemption that is to come. So, Virgin, as I encourage you, I encourage myself. You know, do the work. Make full proof of your ministry. Make full proof of the ministry. Make full use of the Holy Spirit that is in you. Decrease a little bit so that God can increase and use you to the fullest, for we are called according to his purpose. I'm going to go ahead and pray. The closing prayer tonight, praise the Lord. God has been so good to us and so merciful to us. Oh God, God is so faithful. He's so he is a God of patience, I tell you. A God of long suffering. Because even when we keep on making the mistakes and keep on not getting it right, he always send word, he always sends something to say, Listen, that's not what you should be doing. This is what you should be focused on in this time. So we're just thankful, hallelujah. We're just grateful to God. Oh God, we just thank you tonight, Lord Jesus, for your patience, for your long suffering towards us. Oh God, that you, you just keep teaching us and, and helping us, oh God, to be closer to you and to be like you. Oh God, we pray, Lord Jesus, even as we have done the Bible studies tonight, God, as we and we have heard 
Paul's words tonight, Lord Jesus, I pray we too will be encouraged and fired out with a new passion, a new zeal, God, to make full proof of this ministry. I pray, God, that tonight, Lord Jesus, that you will give your people a refreshing, oh God Almighty, that they have a renewed zeal, God, to go all out, even for the saving of a soul. I pray, God, that even as we seek after you, that you will continue to reveal yourself more and more to us god i pray even for those that are easily offended oh god in this faith that god almighty they'll understand that the shepherds that you have set above them oh god is to guide them and to lead them oh god almighty i pray lord jesus that tonight you just let your holy spirit take dominion in us to help its own way in us oh god on a daily oh god every minute of the day lord jesus i pray god that lord jesus that we'll have a heart of thanksgiving that in everything we'll give thanks for this is the will of christ jesus concerning us i pray god that lord jesus as you continue to work in us for god we are confident that the work that you have begun you will complete it lord we are confident lord jesus uh, that you're able to present us faultless before your coming so tonight god we surrender ourselves again we surrender ourselves to you, Jesus. And we ask you to have your own way as we tell you thanks in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Have a good night, everybody. God bless you.